Welcome viewers to today's educational tutorial on how to escape tutorial hell. I woke up this morning and I had this super strange note left for me, I assume it's from one of you, and it says please help I'm stuck in tutorial hell. Now it's a miserable place to be and having been there myself on my own self-taught web developer journey, uh, I feel like I can save you a whole lot of time floundering around trying to find your way out because it can be quite demoralizing and it's just not worth your time and effort. So, without further ado, let's look at the two-part escape solution. So there is one key word that is essential to escaping tutorial hell, and that is adaptation. Adaptation. And essentially how this works is when you do a tutorial, you know, tutorials are a great learning resource and there is nothing wrong with following along with how someone else codes an application. And I think that an essential thing to do while you're following along these tutorials is to riddle them with comments like a disease of all of the interesting things that the educator says throughout their tutorial and then save that resource to your GitHub so that it's like squirreled away in your own little knowledge bank. Super useful, great learning tool. But now, so that you don't have to always depend on that, you have to learn adaptation. And this literally starts off with minor changes. Minor changes, and I cannot emphasize that enough. Literally, when you finish a tutorial, change the color of a section of text. One small change. Invert a button color. Add a border. Increase some padding. One minor change is all you have to do and then maybe in a new tutorial if you're feeling comfortable you might want to implement your own color scheme and so maybe that's you know doing some background colors and some text colors maybe you want to add another section of text or maybe you want to add an image you know literally minor changes from these tutorials is all you have to do and gradually you'll feel more and more comfortable doing these things independent of the person walking you through these lessons. Just little baby steps, I cannot emphasize that enough. Gradually over time you'll feel more and more comfortable implementing these bigger and bigger changes until you reach a point where you'll find a great tutorial, you know, this is speaking from my own experience, some of my portfolio projects, I followed a tutorial that had a good authentication plus database. I completed the entire tutorial, you know, exactly what the application and purpose was. And then what I did is I cloned it, I made a second copy and I gutted all of the content, all of the layouts, everything. And the only thing I kept was the logic. So I kept the logic because, you know, it's complicated to pull this stuff from scratch. And realistically, no one does. Everyone references documentation. Everyone references a previous project done. Everybody has some form of handhold for these large projects. No one just pulls them straight out of the depths of their own mind. And so it's great practice to find these excellent tutorials that have all these best practices and just become familiar with them. Go through it, save it all to your GitHub. You know, you're familiar to the point where, oh, I need to do this. I have this application. I can just go reference that material, keep the key logic. You know, it's not going to be the whole thing and then just totally mutate it into some crazy abomination. You know, a completely different application that's built on the same skeleton. But it's your independent creation. It's your own product. You know, I followed a tutorial that taught me how to implement a database and an authentication system. And the only thing that the tutorial showed me was how to build a dashboard for updating the password. And from there, I kept that same logic. I styled my own login screen. I built my own CRUD application within that login screen that persisted information relevant to that user. None of it was from the tutorial, but I adapted the tutorial to my own benefit. And to this day, that is still a great resource that I have. And for when I want to implement an easy authentication and database system, I don't have to stress about just pulling it straight out of my head. I know that I have it saved in my GitHub and it takes me two seconds to go check it out and I can just literally copy and paste the code in and it makes me an efficient, efficacious, smart developer because I know where the best practices are. I know that it will take me five minutes to implement it and it's just a great overall system. And so adaptation 
is excellent. Those minor changes will help you build everything that is worth memorizing, like how to change text color and how to increase padding and how to add a border or how to console.log something or maybe how to define a route. And those minor adaptations will just burn that into your brain. But they'll also help you distinguish the difference between things that are worth memorizing and things that are just worth storing away, squirreling in a database of your own and just becoming familiar with. You don't have to write them into your head or burn them into your memory. It's just not a good use of time. And this brings me into my second key thing, which is just in terms of what is worth memorizing and what isn't and how to be a good developer. And, you know, you might think that a good developer is the person that can just write the code and doesn't have to reference anything, but it's actually not true. The best developer is the one that can find the best practices, knows where to access this critical information and you know let's say for example you have the brain capacity to memorize three you know systems or three complete implementations or you could be familiar with a hundred different applications have them all saved to a github repository and you know sure you don't have them all memorized in your brain but you can remember subsections and where those specific subsections are like let's say for example you just want to know how to validate a json web token or you know hash a password or something you have that saved to a resource plus 99 other things whereas another individual might only have three things and an employer is going to prefer this infinitely because it's just smart coding so tutorial hell is almost like a blessing in disguise it can be very demoralizing if you're struggling to recolor text but that's why i cannot emphasize enough just minor changes to start and then you'll feel more and more comfortable implementing these bigger changes until you can gut a project of its functionality persist the logic but repurpose it and then for all of the other stuff like maybe coloring your application or whatever it might be you'll be more comfortable with these things that are naturally kind of in your active memory as opposed to just in your passive memory as more of a familiarization but yeah it's just a real gray thing in coding there is nothing wrong with needing a resource to build a full stack application or some reference material. It's a very natural thing. And anyone who memorizes code is just hella flexing because realistically, every application uses code that's already existed before. You know, you just want to know where to find the best information. But yeah, anyway, adapt. Don't feel too bad about tutorial hell. It's okay to need the reference material. It's normal. Anyone who makes you feel otherwise is a muppet. So don't get caught up in it. If you're feeling a bit demoralized, I hope that helps you feel a bit better. I know it sure got me down and it's a pain. And I floundered around until I realized that it wasn't actually such a bad thing. And I could really start to appreciate the benefit of squirreling away knowledge nuggets and just aiming for familiarization as opposed to memorization. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. It helps the channel. Let me know what you want to see next, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.